I'm Josh Valdivieso. I'm, a, I'm an IT student here at Mizzou. I'm John Plotkin. I'm a CS major. Uh, this is our project, uh, Strange Music App. Yeah, uh, this application is developed for iOS 7 iPhone apps. So any um, iPhone device with iOS 7 installed. So iPhone 4 and up, and iPads, iPad 2 and later, I believe. So just a quick overview of what, who Strange Music is. Uh, Strange Music was established in 2000 um, with two people, um, an independent artist, uh, rapper, and then a business person. And it started in uh, his basement, and then it grew to where it is now um, to a multi-million dollar company with uh, two warehouses, well, multiple warehouses, and um, currently active uh, 13 artists on their label right now. So that's just a quick overview of Strange Music. And uh, as to why they wanted to go mobile, as you might have seen this chart before, it's pretty popular, but it just shows that the growth of mobile internet usage compared to using, say, a desktop or laptop. And it just this past February is when it crossed over that more people are now using the internet for mobile than uh, standard computers. And according to the chart uh, from the Internet Trends uh, report, it is expected to keep growing in that direction. So Strained Music wanted to ha give people to access their information easy easily in a mobile setting. Yeah, yes. So why an app? Right now, um, so users, they can view uh, Facebook, Twitter, anything such as that um, via desktop or, or their device. And device is user friendly, it's, it's easy, there's um, less steps, it feels more natural to them. Um, especially how many apps are in um, and have been developed now. So, um, and Strange Music wants um, more of like a, a central hub for users that will make things such as finding uh, information such as, uh, let's see, um, like concert information or getting updates, album updates, any, any kind of updates with artists or the label and it's just a central hub within, um, within the, uh, what's within the app. Uh, as, like this graph is showing specifically, if you look at say Facebook, you look Facebook is gets almost as much use as the mobile browsers. Even though anyone could just go Facebook.com, this is pretty showing that people, if given the choice would rather have a native app than to go on the browser and go to the website, which is why they want more of a native app than just have people go on the Strange Music website. Yes, exactly. OK, so the features within the app, the first feature, uh, a huge feature, iTunes will be integrated within the application. Um, given given the, um, the artist on the label, it's going to return back every album track uh, that is available that's been produced by Strange Music. So within the app, and obviously there's iTunes, but this is integrated within it, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to go view through iTunes. So it's kind of like iTunes just integrated within the app, so it's easier, so you don't have to open multiple apps. And this will be one less step to uh, viewing new album info and up-to-date albums, yeah. Uh, yeah. And another thing is Twitter. Uh, right now the app has, it's connected to the timelines of the Strange Music label as well as the individual artists. So you can just click and you can view whatever they've tweeted. And you have, if you're connected to your Twitter through your phone, you can retweet the tweets and favorite them. And it also has a in-app browser, so if they posted a link, you can click on that without having to leave the app. Yeah, uh, in addition to that, we have a, a concert section which will, just as this 
says display all concert information that is available for each artist and uh, the label in general. So uh, once uh, that's displayed, a user will, um, can select a, a show to get more information about it. And within that, they can do things such as buy tickets, um, share the, the concert information. So it'll share a, a graphic of the, of the flyer they have to any social network or um, messages or email. Um, you, you can also get directions to the venue that the show is, is, is being played at. And as well as setting reminders that will be set uh, 24 hours in advance of the show. So it'd be um, it's very customizable and easy for a, a user to use. And uh, there will also be photos. It will just display photos from the that strange music will have on their server. The app will display, and the user will be able to share the photos based on, on either email or Twitter or Facebook, and it, they can also save them to their phone. So if they want to make it, say, their background, they can do that. Right. And right now, um, I don't know what just happened right there. OK. All right, right now, we're going to actually take a look at the yeah, app. Take a look at the application in take a look at the application in real time. So if this switch over, great, awesome. All right. So um, as you see, there our, our icon is pretty straightforward. It's the Strange Music logo. And this is an iPhone 5S. Uh, we tested on an iPhone 4 or 4S. 4S. A 4S as well, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, so upon going opening the app, the first thing that's displayed <laughs> is concerts. And right now, it's on Strange Music by default. So it's going to show every show that they have available right now for any artist. So it's going to show, that's why it says all current shows. And I clicked on a cell. <laughs> so when, I, when you click on a cell, it's going to show you who's performing. So at this current, this current concert, uh, Tech 9 and Chris Calico will be performing. And as you can see, there's shows the city and state, the venue. Uh, as well as the time and calendar. So if we click on tickets, a little action sheet will be, will be shown, and you can select that. And it'll go to it'll open up a web view. And this is all data that we received from uh, the Strange Music server. So we are provided with whatever, whoever they want to uh, purchase tickets through. So yeah, that's right there. And directions, good directions. I'll open up this. We can, the user can, if they don't like that style, sure, they can change it to a street view. Or they can get directions. And when they get directions, it's actually going to open the, um, the app, uh, the Maps app. So um, I can do it, I'll do it real quick. So good directions, and you can start. Um, so to go back, you would have to exit out of that and just return back to where you were. And then sharing, you can share, as I said, uh, via Twitter, the social networks. Uh, if you do that, there's default text right now with the actual artists that are performing their Twitter handles. So you're uh, tweeting at them, and it'll show just default text and of the artist default text and um, the venue that it's being played at. And you can, and the, if there's the tour flyer for it. So if you post this, oh, I can just post it. That's fine. Um, and the same thing for Facebook, but there's no handles, obviously, because Facebook and Twitter are different. Uh, you do that with the messages and email. This is the same format. And this is the reminders. So. Everything is filled out, determined by the actual show you, you get. So if you look back, it is May 12th at 7 PM. So this, by default, will do 24 hours in advance on the, the calendar. And by default, the priority is set to high. Um, 
users can change this if they want. Um, but with a switches back then, they'll, they'll go back to a day before. And the notes are the general notes that would be useful for users, such as um, the start time, VIP start time, and the ages of the, the art of uh, the show. I'm sorry. Um, and you, yeah, you can, so you can set it. And I'll ask you, sure, I'll set that. Um, I think, I think that's it within the concerts, right? Sure. Yeah. So you want to go to Twitter? So yeah, so for Twitter. Be careful about this. I'm not sure how st steady that is. Uh, right now we're set on strange music, so we can go to their feed to load the tweets, uh, and so you can see the timeline. You can retweet it. Maybe the first one actually is uh, decent. For um, and it says it's been retweeted. Uh, you can click on the link. And there's this article about Mayday. And one of the other features is you go to the this artist tab and you can pick different artists. So I can go to Chris Calico. And when you select a new artist, it automatically takes you to their concerts page. And then I can go to their Twitter and it will load his tweets. So this is his feed and it update based on whichever artists there are. The server says what their handle is. Uh, now, Josh, if you want to go talk about iTunes. Yeah, since we're kind of running fast on time. So uh, right now we're on Chris Calico. So if we go to iTunes, it's going to pull up all of his album information um, in addition to the songs. So, um, so I'm going to see if audio works on here. If not, you can, you'll be able to hear it through. <laughs> but if you click on a, a cell, of, oh man, maybe I should, uh, I'm sorry. Um, this, these are rap artists, so some of their material, I'm gonna find something that's not explicit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this, this is all instrumental stuff right here, that's what I was gonna, if you click on the cell, it'll, that's notification, it'll start previewing the track, which, the, uh, which is gotten from iTunes, so that's 30 seconds. So that'll do for 30 seconds. You can stop it, or you can do another one and interrupt it with doing uh, preview another track. Then if you want to actually, if I pressed it, click on it to actually buy it, it'll bring up the, um, the store, a store view controller so you don't have to leave the, uh, the app. We don't. Um, I think if, I find it frustrating when like you click on something and it takes you out of the app. So we're trying to not, not to do that as much as possible. So since it's on Strange Music, this is um, Strange Music has 61 albums up to date. So once you switch over, your table view will reload with new data that's responding to the album. Um, and that, yeah. Yeah, that's for iTunes. So and the last thing. Last thing. This will be is photos. It actually for now is not. Um, this is hard coded by us because right now there were only two photos on the uh, server. So it will behave differently once the server has been updated. But you can just click on the photo and click options, and you can see you can tweet it or send a text message, uh, save it to your background, and or save it to you. Oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> um, yeah, save image, and now it should be in the photos. I don't know where the photo app is. Right there. Uh, the photo. Right there. Sorry. So, yeah, that's up there. And I think that's it for the app's function. So, if yeah, there so are. Uh, any question? Yeah, let's do Q&A since we have eight seconds. <laughs> if there is any Q&A. I just asked, not uh, obviously being privy to the conversations with the label, but it seems to me they, they would be pretty happy with what you've produced so far. What's your plan going forward to actually implement this? Yeah, um, after, so I plan on, they want it finished, so it's gonna be contracted out. 
So I'm going to finish it, and they want some more stuff integrated, like they want a home page instead of just uh, going straight to tours. Because some artists, we didn't show you, but if they don't have any tour information, then it'll just say there's no current tour information for this artist. So a home page with some featured items from their store, and they want to integrate the store as well, because a lot of the revenue comes from their merchandise sales. So um, yeah, they have a lot of ideas as um, to further this. So great. Yeah. All right, thanks. Awesome, thank you.